application to order. Can we have a roll call uh, vote, please, Mrs. Barrett? Mrs. Snowblin? Here. Mr. Mormon? Here. Mr. Markison? Here. Mrs. Sorensen? Here. Mr. Schreiber? Here. Mr. Powers? Here. Mr. Block? Here. Thank you all. Uh, I'll move right to uh, the President's report. Uh, I just really have one topic I'd like to comment on. It's uh, that time in uh, the year for the board to think about uh, how good a job it feels it's done over the past year and how good a job it feels the superintendent has done for the past year. So over the next uh, month, we will be going through a formal process in that regard. Uh, each individual member actually uh, weighs in uh, on a form that's meant to be quite inclusive both regards of self-evaluation of the board's work and an evaluation of the superintendent's performance uh, over the past year. I mentioned all of this, uh, number one, so the public knows that this process actually happens every year, and number two, uh, to the extent that uh, members of the community would like to weigh in in that regard, the board is always interested in, in what the community thinks about its performance and about the district's performance as a whole to include the superintendent's performance. So if, if there's a, uh, a comment that uh, members of the community would like to, uh, to make to the board, we welcome that. Uh, my address and all the board members' address are on the website. Feel free to let us know. I would ask that uh, you address uh, broad issues to the extent you have a comment and not some experience maybe your child had or your neighbor had or that sort of thing. Uh, that it be meaningful and thoughtful, but we would welcome those comments, and if you could please, please have them in no later than the next two weeks so the board could take them into consideration as it <coughs> formalizes its process, both vis-a-vis, -vis, again, the board and the superintendent, uh, we'd appreciate it. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Mr. Superintendent, <coughs> for your report. Thank you, Mr. Black, and I'd like to start with uh, Mr. Rogers. Thank you, Superintendent Simic. Um, First thing I want to announce is that uh, we're just coming fresh off of our talent show and there is no shortage of talent in Lake Forest and Lake Bluff and Knollwood. Incredible performances, incredible production value. So we just want to thank everybody that's involved in making it a big success for the school. Um, tomorrow uh, will be the first day we start to administer park exams. So for the following week we'll be administering the park exams. And as everyone probably knows by this time, um, the park exams are based on the new rigorous common core standards. Um, I think it's also important for, there's been a much ado about this, but I think it's also important for some other reasons that maybe haven't been talked about. Uh, this is the first time, and certainly not the last time, where we're going to have large-scale administration of digital assessments. And so I think it's a not time for us to stress test our system, time for us to kind of, uh, I think, make some advancements in terms of, of what we're doing. And so I think that that's an exciting proposition, also a very challenging proposition. I'm happy to say that our staff has been working, you know, pretty much uh, steady for the last few months in preparation for the event. Um, it is spring today, and so it was a balmy 45 degrees, and our students ran outside after school, and our spring teams were practicing. It was great. It just shows you how everything is relative here in the Midwest. So it was exciting to see our spring teams are all getting started right now, but we also have some teams that are finishing up other uh, season, probably most notably, um, is our, our basketball team. We're we'll looking at uh, some great challenges here, and hopefully uh, we'll have another game, a sectional game, and a sectional championship if all goes well on Friday. So that's very exciting. Um, I want to just make a, a special plug for a TEDx event. So Lake Forest had applied for a TEDx event, and so it is a pretty rigorous process to be accepted. There aren't too many high schools across the country that are allowed to do a TEDx event, and so if you check out our website, you'll see more information on it, and it's going to be on April 16th. It will be streamed, so members of the community can watch it online. We hope that this becomes an annual tradition for TED uh, at Lake Forest. The first year, we're only allowed to have actually 100 audience members. Uh, it's very prescriptive. There's probably about 150 pages of rules and regulations to go along with it. Um, but in the following year, if all goes well, we'll be able to open up to our auditorium and really an opportunity to showcase you know, all of the talents around Lake Forest. And so we'll have students, we'll have adults um, that are teachers and community members as well involved. So really exciting stuff. I've got one more item that I want to talk about, which is new courses. But before I do that, I would love to turn it over to our student leaders, Luke Gibson and Linus Vigos. 
Good evening, everyone. Hope is everyone doing really well. Um, we are here to talk a little about student council and what's going on lately. Um, I think a week ago from today, so last Tuesday, the, our senior student council held a support staff luncheon. Now, what this was was just about an hour and a half um, where everyone from the support staff, so janitors, librarians, the special education department, the front office, security, everyone you could think of that really helps out around the school kind of gathered together and we held um, just a big lunch for them, trying to say thank you. We had like some good snacks, sandwiches, everything, and um, the seniors were in charge of that. They were also in charge of um, a thank you video, which I thought was really special. So each individual support staff member was mentioned in a video of um, senior students, and I think that it was really important that we honored them and just kind of said thank you, and they seemed to enjoy it. So that was a success. And something exciting that's going on within Student Council is actually within our freshman cabinet, led by two senior members, Margo Miller and Lila Henry. Uh, the freshman cabinet is putting together a public service announcement for all members of Lake Forest High School, trying to encourage students to check their email more often. And this will be a mix of prizes for people who check their emails and, and constant emails marketing this new um, push for people checking their emails as this is the, probably the easiest way for teachers and coaches to contact their, their students. So that's pretty exciting that the freshman is getting something done important in our school. Uh, on top of that, we are also working to donate the last bit of money. It's about $4,000 that we raised from student council to donate to Greenwood Elementary in Waukegan. And that's going to go towards their library, so we're going to rebuild their library and buy them new books. Um, and in fact, the, f the whole student council will be heading over to Waukegan to, to do some hard work ourselves and whatever that may be, painting, stuff like that. But um, that's it for now. Thank you for having us. Okay, great, thanks. Um, and it's great to hear that students will be checking their email. I think <laughs> the joke we had, if you want to you wanna hide some information from your teenager, send them an email. Um, so that's great, and so we're really excited about that, and I think just the role that the student council is, is playing. So every year they get better, but I think you'll see all the ways they have their fingerprints over the school. So they're not just doing the, the traditional things, which are important, picking the, you know, the, uh, the prom thing, but getting into actually things that affect students' lives. So I think that's fantastic, and the advocacy piece is great. So what I'd like to talk about right now is some of the new curriculum offerings that we have for the 15-16 school year. Uh, Luke and Lena won't get to participate in this, but you'll be doing some great stuff, right, at beyond and at, at the university level. Um, but I think what you're going to see is really part and parcel of the energy and the ideas and the creativity that we're seeing at the school. Uh, many of the ideas uh, come right, our grassroots ideas coming right from our faculty. Many of those ideas are the faculty working with the administration and really designing courses which we find are going to be engaging for students, but probably just as important that are very um, transferable to the skills that they're going to need to know to be successful in a 21st century economy. Uh, what the first course is called Exploring Computer Science, and it is a course that I would describe as a course that has a low floor and high ceiling. So kids that are interested in computer science, but they might not have a deep math background. Um, other courses like AP Computer Science, you have to be quite far along in your academic career to take that course. And as we know, students are accessing technology at a very, very early age. So the course is exciting because it does teach a lot of fundamental ideas about computer science, but it also gets into ideas of problem solving, the ideas of how technology works um, and how people use it as a tool in different types of disciplines. So I think it's a real exciting thing and it really is a gateway course to study um, technology and computers later on down the line. Uh, AP Chinese Language and Culture. This is just a natural outgrowth of our uh, language, world language program right now. So we are offering AP language classes in all of the other world languages. We have yet to do that in AP until this year. And so now we've, I think we've reached a critical mass, if you will, of students that are capable of taking AP uh, Chinese language, which is really impressive because it is equivalent to a second semester class at the university level. Guitar making, this is a fun one and one that I'm going to sign up for myself. Um, in this course, students actually build guitars, electric guitars, from scratch. 
They learn the theory behind building of the guitar. Uh, they learn the science behind it. Um, they learn the electronics. So not only are they doing woodwork, they're also using an oscillosco a oscilloscope to um, study electronics of it. It's a one semester course. I think it's, it's really exciting. Students also do learn, I, I should also point out some of the, the music theory. So it is interdisciplinary in nature. Modern global issues. Um, this is actually some great work our faculty has done. In the past, we've offered classes that were separated in terms of really, I think, distinct um, areas of the world. So you, maybe Europe, African American studies, so on and so forth. And so they put their best ideas and their best mind, their best thinking together and said, what's a course that students could really use to really learn about all global issues, learn about the historical context leading to global issues. Um, this picture I love, um, people say, what are those, those crazy orange pods in there? Is it like, are those the alien spaceship has landed? But actually those um, pods represent water collection devices. And those are devices that are used and will actually collect 100 liters of water in a day. So they look at issues that are affecting sub-Saharan Africa, issues that are affecting Europe, uh, the Asian continent, and uh, the United States continuing role as a leader in the world. AP Environmental Science and U.S. Government Policy. Um, this is a course that actually is an interdisciplinary course that takes the best of AP Environmental Science and Government Policy. One of the um, innovative parts about it is that actually students will be doing this in a two-hour block. So students will be doing this and they'll have an opportunity to go out into the community. You can imagine them go out into Elowa Farm, go out to the ravines, go out to Lake Michigan, uh, do environmental studies, and then take their findings to City Hall and be able to advocate. Um, so it's also a problem-solving problem course. Um, you know, it, when I was a teacher, one of the courses I taught was AP Environmental Science. And at times, it actually could be the most depressing course in a school because you know that the, the, the planet is, is under a lot of duress and a lot of challenges as we go through it. But this course, I think, is really exciting because it really is based on problem solving. And so I think um, if you like this, if you're, an, if you're someone who just cares about the environment, it's great. But if you're going to be a leader, I think, in any capacity, government, corporations, um, having a, gr a strong background in environmental policy and what it means can only be a benefit for our students. AP Seminar. Um, this is part of the AP Capstone sequence. If you're part of this AP Capstone sequence, you will now receive a special diploma. Uh, Lake Forest was one of only 10 high schools this year that was accepted to offer this program in the state of Illinois. Um, the seminar format is a little bit different. So you might have heard some of the traditional criticisms of AP. It's a very canned curriculum. It's very discreet in terms of what kids learn. Um, it's very challenging. You don't have enough time. AP Seminar is much more uh, centered around learning the tools that you're going to learn at the university level. Very transferable to what kids are going to do at the university level. Um, a lot of higher level thinking, critical thinking, time for kids to follow their own passions within a particular discipline. This course will be followed by a subsequent course, um, which will be called AP Research, and they'll learn college level research skills to back that up. I should also mention that this year, this course is going to be framed around modern global issues. Um, in the future, we can see this course actually uh, blossoming into other disciplines as well. Robotics. Um, the 14-15 school year, we featured our first robotics teams. They've done very well um, in throughout the competition. I think kids are having a great experience. Um, you know, one of the jokes about robotics, and you can see our, our competitive team, right? You, what you'll see up there is you see a, a robot with a giraffe head. That's our team called Giraffic Park. And so um, they've got the Giraffic Park logo shirts on there. Um, great group of students. Um, we're very much into sports, and what I love about this, this sport is this is a sport where everybody can go pro. Next year, we're going to be offering this as a class, and so it will be a standalone class in addition to a competitive team. English Language and Composition. Um, this is a course which is widely taught, I think, at other um, competitive high schools and our peer high schools. It was never uh, really offered here at Lake Forest High School. This course, as opposed to the literature course, really focuses on the skills required um, at the university level for writing and critical thinking. And so I think it's a real benefit. And uh, the early returns is we've had um, well over 100 students already sign up for this course. So I think it's very promising. Uh, academics teacher's assistants. So we have um, students that are, I think historically we've had 
lab aides that have come and helped out in the science lab. We've had people that may have helped out, tutor a student in, in a foreign language. This program formalizes that, uh, so students have that actually in their program. But students are also learning mentoring and they're learning teaching skills. So it's not just grading papers, they're actually working side by side with the teacher through that process. Last one, um, certainly not least, lifeguard training. So um, it's, this is a fantastic program where actually kids will learn uh, important life skills, CPR, first aid, uh, learn about responsibility. Um, the statistics um, are, are quite staggering in terms of the accidents around water. And many people, um, even people you might know in your life, aren't necessarily um, capable of always swimming or, or ha being in challenging situations. We know a lot of our students, and I know my family, we love to vacation around water. Um, it becomes an important part of, of people's lives. And so it's just something that's great, just really applicable. It's a great also thing for kids' summer jobs. Um, we joke that many of the people, including the principal, any assistant principal, we got our leadership start on the beach as lifeguards. So it's a great opportunity for kids, and I think just rounds out our program. So that's all I have to say in terms of our offerings. Um, what I'd like to do right now is uh, turn the microphone over to Lauren Fagel, our Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum Instruction and Technology, and she's going to talk a little bit about the materials and textbooks that we'll be using in some of the new courses, but I think in across the board in some of our other programs. So thank you very much. So just a brief update, over here we have our recommended textbooks for adoption. We'll be um, asking the board to vote on those at the April 14th meeting. So they, there are nine new textbooks being recommended for next year and they each have a cover sheet um, that explains uh, the course that they'll be used for, the age of the current textbook, the reason for the update, um, and some information about the new text. So these will be available for the next five weeks with Eileen in the district office. And if you have any questions about any of the textbooks, please direct them to me. Um, and then uh, we'll be bringing those to the board for adoption in April. And to complete the superintendent's report, I'd like to pass on uh, some of the news. We have been uh, very, very busy, and I'd like to pass on some highlights from Lake Wobegon. The talent show is arguably the best event of the year, showcasing our students' various talents. The singing is universally remarkable. The dancing, not so much. Is the Phenomenal dance team is bookended by the senior acts with some of our very large but very game guys hamming it up with gusto. Apart from the performances is the, comp is the incredible production value. Every microphone works, the lights go on when they're supposed to, the transitions are seamless and our kids make all of this look so easy and it's nothing short of amazing from beginning to end and every year I think that the next year couldn't be any better and every year I leave thinking it might just be. Our high school open house is this Thursday at 7 o'clock in the library and we look forward to hosting any and all community members who are able to attend our open house. In our open house we will review the current state of the school from financial, curricular, and instructional perspectives. A question and answer time and a tour of some of our new spaces will also be a part of the program. We should also be proud of our school and its staff for the eighth grade curriculum night. Our school is on display and curious and often anxious parents and students had a chance to see the array of programs and people at our high school. The mood was very upbeat with the only sour note, the realization that they would never be able to take full advantage of all the offerings in the course of their four years there. Uh, many times that night I heard, wow, I would love to be in high school again. This is a very high compliment to our staff, to our facilities that we have. There's a real wow factor in every way. I'd also like to point out at your table are copies of the book Mindset. Author Dr. Carol Dweck will be visiting us in, the, in August of this year. Uh, and Mrs. Whipple has a copy of the, the, uh, the upcoming dates for our community book talks. Mrs. Whipple, do you care to add anything there, or should I keep going? No, just so we hope everybody in the community gets the book and reads it. I think it's a great spring break read. It's easy, and it's applicable to business as well as education and parenting. It's really, I see uh, Mr. Schreiber nodding his head. And uh, just to thank Lake Forest Bookstore, has generously offered a 15% discount for anyone who stops by there to 
uh, by the book. And we're also talking to Croya about seeing if we can have some of their leadership group join us in the discussion. So we'll keep you posted to that. And it, it bears repeating that we would not be able to have Dr. Dweck come and visit us if it were not for LEAD, taking the lead on uh, engaging her. So we'll be having a conversation with her to let her know what, what sort of topics we'd like her to, to discuss. It'll be one conversation with our community and another conversation with our uh, 67 and 115 staff and any other of the surrounding schools that wish to attend. And with that, I'd like to conclude the superintendent's report. Thank you very much, Mr. Simic. Uh, fellow board members, any questions regarding the new course offerings? Yeah, just a, a question, Barry. Um, are we are we doubling down on AP? I know we've we've had discussions about the secret sauce and IB. Can you just comment on AP and what our our strategy is with that curriculum? I think our first strategy around AP was identifying in the school that we had um, a number of students who were capable of taking advanced placement courses. Um, in fact, we actually had two groups, and so we had a divide. We had um, students who were taking four or five AP courses, and students who were taking zero AP courses. Um, we have uh, approximately 98, 99% of our students going to the university level um, and graduating. Um, but for some reason, we, they were, half of them were being deemed as not being able to take an AP course. So some of the work that we did first had to do around access and participation. Uh, the College Board creates a report called AP Participation Rate, um, but they also create another report which looks about uh, students that which are able to take it who have not taken an AP course. And so we actually started going through those lists. And so some of the things that we did is try to create access and opportunity. So just even going into the 14-15 school year, uh, we pulled back some of the, uh, the prerequisites that were on there. And for instance, science was a big one. We had a big uptick in science, um, about 30% more students in science AP. The best part about it, those students are thriving. They're doing well. Um, we don't want to put kids in harm's way. This, this is not about taking the kid who's got five AP classes and telling him you need to take seven or eight. I think we're excited about the direction that AP is going with the capstone project and the seminar project um, because I think it really does represent the types of seminars they're going to see at the university level, especially at our most competitive schools. Um, so I think we're going to see, uh, hopefully, uh, a big uptick in that number in the next, in the next couple of years in terms of students taking that rigorous coursework. Um, that formula doesn't work without great supports. I think that's also really important. I think the work that we're doing at the Math Resource Center, within the Writing Center, and across the disciplines is really a big part of the success story. So the best thing that I want to be able to tell everybody at the end of this year, whether it's AP courses or honors courses, or maybe a student was in a lower level course which is now taking a, a regular level course, the message, the narrative that we would love to be able to, to tell you here at the end of the year is that we've got more students taking challenging, rigorous courses and less students dropping those courses and more students being successful. That's our end game. Let me, let me chime in a little bit there, too. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very good question, uh, that I think, and, and a timely one. One of the things that is most encouraging to us as we're looking at APs is that uh, the College Board is really changing its philosophy, and it's beginning with the U.S. history curriculum. Uh, the, the old joke about the AP history classes was uh, if you dropped a pencil, you missed 100 years. And it was really an inch deep and a mile wide, and they're, they've uh, changed their, their assessment significantly and are looking at uh, depth, not breadth, in the course of their instruction. If they were not doing that, I think we would be taking a very different approach to this. I think it's a very healthy approach that they're taking. And uh, due to uh, Mr. Rogers' uh, connections uh, uh, across the state, one of the most promising things that we have going on is the AP seminar. And we're one of only 10 uh, schools in the state, as, as I think he mentioned, that are able to pilot that. And that is a, a great example of what we're looking at. Inter, uh, interconnected materials, students pursuing things that are their interests with a faculty member that shares that interest in, a, in something that is more student determined and very meaningful uh, to the student. 
I think that class, the, the seminar class, along with the, um, the AP Enviro and AP Government and Policy, and then perhaps also the, uh, the English uh, language course are three of the most um, exciting additions we've had to the curriculum in quite a while. Well, I shouldn't say that because that computer science class, that's pretty exciting too. But just the fact that these are AP courses, but they aren't sort of the, the cookie cutter AP courses and we're just gonna have to push, push, push to get through this really rigid curriculum you know, in time for the AP exams. These are deep classes. These are classes where students are gonna be able to really delve deeply into something that they care a lot about to at least a certain extent work at their own pace and end up with something at the end that they're going to be able to carry forward into college and perhaps even their careers. So I think those are really good additions. Okay, board members, uh, I would encourage you to spend some time at the table over there and take a look at the new textbook that we'll be asked to approve uh, at the April meeting. You'll note there is cost information there for the textbook. Uh, those of you with children can read it and weep, so to speak, uh, but it's uh, reflective of uh, you know, the school's consciousness regarding book costs, and, and I'm pleased to see that uh, we're being more proactive about those kinds of things. In part, I think, because uh, we'll talk about later, we changed the whole student fee concept. We have a flat fee for books now, and it's provided some incentive uh, for increased inspection and sensitivity in that regard. Lastly, uh, because it came up, I'll mention the uh, open house on Thursday night. As some of you know, I will not be able to attend. I'll be out of town, but our able vice president Mr. Schreiber uh, will be there, and some of the rest of you I know will be there. Uh, I, I want to emphasize this uh, for the benefit of the community members. It's our goal here that this evolve to become uh, similar to the city's uh, meetings, uh, ward meetings uh, held routinely, and an opportunity for dialogue uh, with the community in, in maybe a little bit less formal, uh, certainly a, a not a televised, not a taped kind of environment like we have here at the board meetings where we, we cover so many uh, administrative and ministerial uh, kinds of things. So uh, anyone out there in the community with an interest uh, in the high school or particular uh, issue with the high school, I would encourage to come, please. We, we welcome your, uh, not only coming, but your participation in terms of uh, you know, question and answer and that, and that sort of thing. Okay, that brings us uh, to uh, the time uh, in every public meeting uh, for uh, public participation and public comments, or if there are any members of the audience who would like the opportunity to make a comment to the board, I would encourage them to do so now. Is there anyone there who would like to do that? Seeing none, we'll move further on to uh, reports and discussions. Uh, Mr. Simic? None this month, sir. Okay, fine. And that brings us to uh, board committee reports. Uh, first off, the board educate. Education Committee, Ms. Snowblin. The Education Committee has not met since our last meeting, and our next uh, Education Committee meeting is scheduled for the first Wednesday in April. I think it might be the fourth. I think. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, now uh, the Board Finance and Operations Committee, Mr. Powers, I know you did meet recently. We did indeed. Uh, I should revise that when I say we. I was not in attendance for full disclosure. I had a uh, business conflict, but felt it was important based upon the public schedule and, and the community members that were already committed to be there that we kept that date. But Alan and I did communicate um, numerous times in advance of that meeting, so I feel very comfortable with the way the agenda was let, uh, was run and, and topics that we had discussed many times already, three of which will be showing up as action items later today, so I won't go into all the details. I do want to foreshadow that we are going to change the May finance and operations meeting. I once again had another conflict. I had inherited this schedule from my predecessor, who happens to be sitting to my left. And uh, unfortunately, there were a few conflicts in that. So we're going to make that adjustment since that's a May meeting date and plenty of time to communicate it to anybody, because uh, as you know, public is certainly welcome to attend. Um, so I'll yield back the balance of my time. Uh, Mr. Mormon, you, would you like to add anything to that? Yeah, since um, I was the only one there at the meeting. The only board kind of member only board member the only there. Board there <laughs> no, there were, board. actually, it was very well attended. Um, so uh, let me just go in real quick. Um, as uh, John said, the agenda was set and it worked out really well and we finished early. 
Uh, well, the, the biggest issue was uh, CDAL, as people are aware, CDAL um, rents a large amount of space in, in this building. Um, they're going to be terminating their lease and we're allowing them to terminate a year early. In addition, over the next 20 years, we're going to give them $70,000 a year to cover, they, they put about four or four and a half million dollars into renovating the building. Um, and this is all contingent upon, they, they found a new lessor or lessee, uh, and that would be uh, new connections. And they uh, primarily serve, I, I believe it's an aut autism community. Uh, as it is, we're basically going to be kept whole, and it sounds like it's a good move for the schools, it's a good move for um, you know, the special needs community, and some of those are going to be you know, local residents, so it's always nice to be able to service our residents in the community rather than you know, sending them out to you know, far away uh, sc schools. So, um, and as John said, this will come up as an action item. And like I said, the good thing about this is they were going to cancel their lease in two years based on having several of their uh, members of their consortium uh, departing the, the co op, uh, just as we had discussed uh, with the NSSCD. So, in the end, we're going to end up um, really no change for us. And I believe, is there anybody here that was going to talk to that? Yeah, okay, and that, then that's why it's coming up later in the agenda. Yeah, I know. <laughs> for the record, and again, uh, approval of student fees—that was a big topic. We decided to keep those flat, except s some fees. We'll have a small uh, cola adjustment. So I can tell you want me to move this along. Uh, the b bigger thing was new connections had asked for signage out in the front, and then there was talk about see it all Little Scouts, Lake Forest High School West Campus, athletic <laughs> facilities, administrative offices. And you got to be, we don't want this to look like a strip mall. And so we're going to recommend to the board that we have a discussion and a committee to meet to basically build one sign with that, you know, neatly done like City of Lake Forest does that um, identif identifies all of the, uh, you know, activities that do occur at West Campus. And for the rest of it, I'll, I'll just let it come up as an action item and uh, just say it, it was a good meeting and we finished 10 minutes early. Thank you, Ted. I'm sure it was, it was well uh, excellent run. board representation there that was at the meeting that led to that. Uh, if there's any further questions, uh, board members, about the committee or its uh, its meeting agenda. Uh, if not, uh, we'll move to liaison reports. Uh, are there any liaison reports, Ted? Do you have anything to report? Uh, actually, I'll jump right into that too. To hog the ahead, microphone please. here. Uh, NSSED. Um, they met actually. Um, last night, which I was unaware of. I thought it was um, next Wednesday. And anyway, um, there wasn't a whole lot to report. The committee was selected that is going to be uh, com conducting the new superintendent uh, search. And to clarify, not our superintendent, is to replace Superintendent Thomas at NSSCD. Uh, in addition, um, I've taken over as the governing board member um, on the NSSCD Foundation and I'll keep you up to date on that. Other than that, there was, was not much that happened since our last meeting. Thank you very much. Uh, anybody else have any liaison reports? Any other activities? Okay, hearing none, uh, that brings us to action items. The first uh, item on the list is approval of the new student fee schedule. And uh, as has been reported, it was discussed at Finance and Operations, we made uh, major significant modifications last year. Some of you will remember to that fee schedule. And uh, Mr. Simic and Mr. Albus, I have a feeling will give us more detail there. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Black. We spent a good deal of time talking about student fees last year, and this is an update to that uh, from Mr. Albus. As you said, there were a lot of changes made to the fee structure last year, and drilling down on that specifically after numerous conversations, there was a consensus on the board last year that the board should have some skin in the game when it came to textbooks. So we went from a pass-through cost on textbooks to a standard fee and reduced the fee, which we estimated to be almost a 21% savings on average. We also took yearbooks and reclassified those from a required fee to an optional fee 
resulting in a potential registration fee reduction of 18.7%. Additionally, we took club fees, which the year before were $125 per participant and eliminated those. We felt, and we put a lot of planning into it, that through the registration process, those fees, once people understood them, or those changes were really well received. We also, when we debrief after we go through it, we, we try to look at, did we miss anything here? Do we need to tweak things? Felt really good about the process. Now, where we land on textbooks in the future, we need a couple of years of data because we really want to drive it off expenses. And we're only one year into it. So we'll have to wait and see where we go there. So as Mr. Mormon stated, what we're recommending going forward for next year on a lot of fees is really holding firm and on other areas um, adjusting per maybe inflation or some known cost or just rounding up. So for example, the athletic participation fee would see about a 2.38% increase. Uh, we would expect expenses to go up roughly about the same amount anyway, just because salary costs go up for all the stipend and coaching positions. Um, parking has a 1.56% recommended increase, and transportation is a 1.59% increase. Other than that, the only other increases are actual pass-through costs for yearbook and young idea. Otherwise, all fees are held the same. Thank you, Mr. Albus. Uh, I'd entertain a motion uh, regarding approval of this new student fee schedule. I move. <laughs> Need my glasses. I move that the Lake Forest Community High School District 115 Board of Education approve the student fees as presented. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion, board members? Hearing none, can we have a roll call vote, Mrs. Barrett, please? Mr. Mormon? Aye. Mrs. Snowburn? Aye. Mrs. Sorensen? Aye. Mr. Markison? Aye. Mr. Schreiber? Aye. Mr. Powers? Aye. Mr. Block? Aye. Thank you, board members. That brings us to approval of the renewal of the Citadel uh, Theater lease. Uh, Mr. Simic and Mr. Albus, I presume one of you will handle that as well. As stated in the cover memo, in July of 2010, the district entered into a five-year lease agreement with Citadel Theater Company for a former lecture room at West Campus. The area was turned into a black box theater from which Citadel typically stages four shows per year. The first year rent was $10,000 and the agreement specified annual increases of 2.5%. Citadel is requesting to renew the lease for an additional five-year period and continue the 2.5% annual increase. The revenue from this rent is very small, but the utilization of this space benefits more of the community than just those with ch people with children in the district. So when they run their shows, you see buses pull up from like Forest Place. People come to shows that don't have any other connection with the school district, so we see that as a good thing. Either party can cancel the agreement with one year's notice. The original lease was developed with considerable input from legal counsel. However, since it's basically a rollover, we simply went through the lease and looked at what was uh, not appropriate anymore. There were some initial startup things that didn't make sense anymore, we took those out. We also strengthened some language to our benefit about the addition of some uh, extra shows. So we would recommend approval of the lease as presented. I would entertain a motion for approval. I move that the Lake Forest Community High School District 115 Board of Education approve the Citadel lease renewal as presented. Is there a second? Second. Thank you very much. Any discussion or questions, board members? I need to mention that I have a professional relationship with Citadel Theater, so I'm going to abstain from voting. Thank you, Mr. Snowman. Any other uh, comments or questions? No. I think the lease, from my perspective, has been very beneficial for uh, the community as a whole. It provides a small amount of income to the school, but it's great to be able to host uh, an enriching experience uh, for the community in, at a time that doesn't conflict with you know, the other demands on the facilities, I think it's been 
you know, a good relationship for both sides. So a roll call vote, please, Mrs. Barrett. Mrs. Sorensen. Aye. Mr. Powers. Aye. Mr. Mormon. Aye. Mrs. Snowblin. Abstain. Mr. Schreiber. Aye. Mr. Markison. Aye. Mr. Black. Aye. That brings us now to the approval of the CEDAW uh, determination agreement. For those who don't know, CEDAW is an acronym for uh, what their special education, special education district, district of Lake, of Lake County. County. Uh, analogous to our NSSED, uh, North Shore Special Education District that we're a member of. Actually, that's uh, North Suburban, Northern Suburban. North Suburban, okay. North Shore, North Suburban. Thank you. Mr. Albus. Thank you. Four years ago, the Special Education District of Lake County entered into a 20-year lease with the district for the second floor academic wing of West Campus. CEDAL agreed to invest $3.8 million in building improvements and pay rent over 20 years, totaling $5.5 million. The lease was structured in such a way that during the first five years, the annual rent would be $150,000 per year. The second five years, and this year is the first year of that second five, the lease went up to $250,000 a year and then it increases to 350,000 a year for the duration for the last 10 years of the lease. So as we sit here today, there's about $4.5 million of scheduled revenue to come into the district. I think my memo had 4.4. I apologize uh, for that typo. Several districts have recently given notice of their intent to withdraw from CEDAW, which will have a significant impact on their revenue. So last spring, CEDAL approached us and requested that we renegotiate the lease. We declined at that time, but indicated we were willing to work with them towards our mutual benefit. Last summer, CEDAL provided us with a two-year intent to terminate notice as required by the lease. That wasn't a surprise, it wasn't adversarial. In fact, when they gave it to us, there was a mutual understanding that we were gonna continue to work to find a solution that worked for both parties. After months of discussions and exploring various options, I think that that solution has been found. Uh, tonight, the administration is recommending the approval of two documents to you. The first is a lease termination agreement with CEDAW that will require them to actually vacate the premises this summer, which is a year early. In exchange, the district, so long as a lease is executed with Connections Academy East, will over the next 15 years annually reimburse CEDAW for a portion of the capital improvement costs that were invested in the facility. So again, when they came in, they put in $3.8 million. Per this agreement, we will reimburse about $1.4 million of that. And some of the improvements that, that, were, that were put in is when you enter the building, that glass wall, entrance you come in, that used to be open space. Uh, the elevator that exists uh, did not exist. And the bathrooms, when you come up at the top of the stairs, were renovated to our benefit because we, we cut those in half to benefit the school as well. Mr. Mormon touched on the fact that it's not exactly 70,000 a year, but it does average out to 70,000 a year. I think it's more of a step scale in that. So that's the first document before you tonight. If there is no lease executed with new connections or if new connections a month from now says uh, something's happened, we can't come in, we revert back to the position we're in today, which is that CEDAW will owe us rent for next year. So that's all part of the termination agreement. We've protected ourselves on, on both ends there. The second document submitted for your consideration tonight is a 15-year lease agreement with Connections Academy East. The lease agreement will increase the rent to offset the aforementioned reimbursement to CEDAW. So as Mr. Mormon stated earlier, we're kept whole. It'll be one year longer than the existing CEDAW lease, so it'll generate an additional $350,000 to the district. As I said earlier, the amount of lease revenue at risk of being lost by the withdrawal of CEDAW is north of $4 million. So negotiating a termination agreement with CEDAW 
and a new lease with Connections Academy will preserve that revenue. The enclosed documents were developed with significant input from legal counsel. The structure of the lease with Connections will largely mirror the lease that is in place with CEDAW now. There will be some modification to allow more of a consistent rent payment rather than the step-up schedule that's in the CEDAW lease. The current lease with CEDAW was originally written for a K-8 school. At CEDAW's request, a 9-12 transition program was approved a couple of years ago. Connections is requesting, and we have agreed, that the lease be written for a K-12 school. The 9-12 portions would likely be comprised of high-functioning autistic children and EDBD children. This change may increase the student population by 20 to 30 students. Now in doing our due diligence, we did a site visit out to one of their schools last week, also called the Grays Lake Police Department, which would be a first responder to their school to ask about their interactions with the school. Uh, they were very positive about the way the schools run and about the relationship that they have with the school. So again tonight, there are two documents before you. One is a, a lease termination agreement with CEDAW. We recommend approval of that. And then following that, we would recommend approval of a new lease with Connections. At this time, I'd like to ask Betty Lundquist to come up. She's the founder of New Connections to give you a little summary about their facility. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having us. We're really excited, very excited to be here. So I won't take a lot of your time. I'll just speak briefly and then I'm here to entertain any questions as well as um, one of our other partners, Dr. Saul Rappaport and Mrs. Elena Murillo, who is currently the principal over at Connections Day School in Libertyville. So in um, 1998, we opened our first school and we couldn't actually find a home. So we opened in St. Therese Hospital because uh, managed care left a medical wing empty. And uh, we, that school now is housed in Libertyville. It has about 85 to 90 students that are EDBD special education students. If you walk upstairs in that building, there's representation from about 30 to 35 different districts across Lake and McHenry and Cook County. Then in 2001, since Connections Day School became so popular and was generally always full, Districts came back to us and asked us to open a second school, which we did. It's called uh, South Campus, and it's located in Palatine. That school has a very, very similar population to Connections Day School. It's about 90 to 95 students, uh, first grade through high school, all EDB kids, probably 35 to 40 districts, including um, kids all the way from Naperville, all over the place. Um, then we, f we saw a little bit of a niche. We had a lot of high-functioning Asperger's autistic kids on the spectrum that were in our schools, and they were doing really well, but not as well as we really thought they could do. And so in 2006, we opened uh, New Connections Academy, which is, as far as I understand, the only school in the state of Illinois for only high-functioning autistic students. That school flourishes with 65 um, first grade through high school students. It is filled 100% of the time, 100% of the year. Our other two schools are filled probably 95% of the time at capacity and many, many, many times throughout the school year we turn students away. So CEDAL approached uh, me in August of this year about their Sally Potter situation and that through between August and now, we've uh, worked out an agreement with CEDAL as well as with um, Mr. Simic and Mr. Albus from your district and we're very, very excited and pleased about that. Um, so with that, I'm, I'm happy to entertain any questions you might have. Well, first off, let me say thank you for being here, and sure, of we course. appreciate your patience as we work our way through our opening meeting, meeting agenda items and ministerial kinds of actions. So thank you again for being here and for your patience in of course. waiting for your turn to come, so to speak. So board members, uh, any questions you'd like to ask? 
Um, do most of your students spend the entire school year in one setting or do they tend to come and go as they need to over the course of the year? You mentioned having vacancies that may occur during the year. Sure, of course. So our primary goal is to get students to return to their home school as soon as they have overcome the issues that they are, um, that brings them to our setting. So if that means that in the, in the month of January where there's maybe a break, natural break, um, and they're doing really well with us, we might have them uh, in accordance with their home district, we would set up a partial transition to their home school. If that goes really, really well, then clearly as soon as they're ready, we wanna get them back to their home school in the least restrictive environment. So we do have students coming and going and entering the program at all times throughout the, the school year. We also run as a contract to um, CEDAL and many other districts outside of CEDAL, a diagnostic program which is, um, and we've had a couple of students from your district actually participate in that diagnostic program. So if, if a district is faced with a move-in or a student that is just really not functioning well at all and cannot continue in their homeschool environment, we take that student on as a diagnostic student. We do a full case study evaluation they get all the services that the children in our regular school special education program provides, as well as a full case study. And we sit down with the parents and the district at the end of that 60-day diagnostic program and try to figure out what is in the best needs of that student and get them hooked up in the best placement that they can be. So there is a continual turnover of those students as well. We would anticipate a very small diagnostic program at this setting with the high functioning autistic population only. Um, that is a significant unmet need in the community that districts have. Then I have one question that's really just a matter of curiosity, not relevant to this particular sure. situation, but I'm interested in your academy for the, the students who are high functioning with, with autism. Mm -hmm. Um, it seems to me that there'd be some really interesting potential educational programming possibilities um, with a, um, a population that's that specific. Do sure. you, what kind of curric curriculum do you follow in, in a school like that? Is it, is it conventional or does it kind of build on the abilities that they have? Well, our job is to return them to their home school, and we obviously have to provide them with the appropriate credits from their home school. So we're coordinating the course materials that we're providing them with their home school. So you can imagine what a large task that is if you have 35 different districts for 65 children. So it keeps someone like Mrs. Murillo very busy as a principal trying to make sure that that happens. How, how many uh, students do you anticipate being enrolled here? on average? You know, I, um, I remember when this was built and I, I, um, I've known all, all the CEDAW superintendents since CEDAW was formed. Um, so this location was actually built out for 120 students. CEDAW has never had more than um, 81, 82, something like that. Um, we think and anticipate that we'll go to around 110. It's a very large space. If you could see how many students I have put in a very much smaller spaces. This is like um, the Ritz-Carlton, I would say, for my staff. Thank you. Sure. Where do they come from? What? The home what? district refers, uh, you know, there's a determination that they cannot meet their needs and the home district generally makes a recommendation to the parents to look at a number of schools and the parents go around and tour whatever um, two or three schools that that district has suggested might be a good fit. And then the parents make the ultimate Where decision. Where would these kids? That they would come from, from all over, all right? All over sure. the northwest suburbs, all yes. over the northern, okay. Yes, it would be similar representation to the other three schools that we have, 35 or so districts, I'm sure. Given the circumstances that brought you here, I wonder if you could comment, I know it's probably a difficult question, but on uh, your financial stability, what you see going forward, because obviously we felt very good yeah. a fairly short time ago about CEDAW and the landscape has kind of changed as sure. we know from 
uh, NSSED on, in special education. So, uh, and maybe Alan, you can address that. I think we both can. We can tag team on, on that one. Okay, um, the landscape can can always change. Uh, I think this is a very good deal for all parties because we haven't burned a bridge with CEDAW. Uh, we're actually helping them and helping them with their revenue shortfall by helping them recoup some of their initial investment. This is a good deal for our district because we stay whole and it's a good deal for connections because it serves a very big need that exists in the community or in the county. If for example, five years from now or 10 years from now, something shifted uh, with state funding um, to where it was less advantageous for connections but more advantageous for CEDAW, the fact that we haven't burned that bridge, I think is a good thing. And we don't really see the need going away. So we've positioned ourselves well. And um, so that, that's kind of the broad umbrella and then the specifics on connections. <laughs> So um, local districts pay our tuition, which is set by the Illinois Purchase Care Review Board in Springfield. Um, the way districts pay the tuition is through a formula that's in statute in the state of Illinois. There's a line item in the Illinois education budget that's called private tuition. It's under a category called mandated categoricals. And it basically means that the legislator really can't mess with it too much. If you reduce special education funding, you lose what's called MO, maintenance of effort from the federal government. So there's very, very limited ability under the mandated categorical sections, which we fall under to reduce funding. Is that helpful? It, it is, thank you very much, I appreciate it. It's a lot more complex, that's my two <laughs> Two second well, I explanation. That summary and, it, and it gives me some comfort. Other board members? I, you know, I would just add, um, you know, one of the things from a business perspective when you think about running an operation, uh, and I know many of us in this room and a lot at home have done that. Um, when you think of leadership, you want people that work on your business. When you think about great management, you want people that work in your business. And you know, we're very fortunate as board members to have um, Alan Albus and his team really doing both for us. And, and I think this has really come together as we've talked about this in finance and operations. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a tremendous um, opportunity because it solves a problem. It's one that exists within the community that creates a tremendous opportunity of learning for, you know, some of our most precious students at, at all ages, K through 12. And, um, you know, it, it, it's, I, I've used the phrase in the past couple months, this was a blessing in disguise. Um, and I would continue to reiterate that. I think it's a, it's a perfect win, win, and win when you look at our community in terms of how it fits and, and the need that we're able to satisfy and the space and the growth and, and all those things that, that I think are gonna be available from the space. So I just publicly wanna mention that um, you know, thank you to New Connections. Thank you to Alan and his team. And um, I, for one, as one sitting board member, am, am pretty impressed with the horsepower that we have as an organization to be thinking about these opportunities and solving these problems. So, so thanks to everybody. Yeah, along those same lines, Alan, I think we, we all know that this is the culmination of many months of, of work by you and your team. I'm just so pleased that it was able to be resolved in a way that didn't harm CEDAW, doesn't harm us, and then gives Connections a, a new opportunity. So thank you, as John said, for all the work that you put into this. Okay, I would entertain a motion first uh, regarding the uh, termination of the CEDAW lease. I, I move that the Lake Forest Community High School District 115 Board of Education approve the seed all termination agreement as presented second thank you very much i presume there's no further uh, comments or questions for them uh, miss barrett can we have a roll call vote please mr powers aye mr schreiber aye mrs snowblin aye mrs Sorensen. aye mr Markison. aye mr mormon aye mr block aye
Thank you very much, board members. And now I'll entertain a motion regarding approval of the new connections lease. I move that the Lake Forest Community High School District 115 Board of Education approve the new connections lease as presented. Second. Uh, thank you very much. Any discussion or comments? Board members? Mrs. Uh, Barrett, roll call, please. Mr. Schreiber? Aye. Mrs. Snowblin? Aye. Mr. Mormon? Aye. Mr. Markison? Aye. Mr. Powers? Aye. Mr. Schreiber? Aye. Mrs. Sorensen? Aye. Mr. Block? Aye. Uh, now that uh, the board has unanimously approved these arrangements, I will take the opportunity to formally welcome new connections uh, to our family, so to speak, and to the building. Uh, anyone who's been associated with this building since its inception knows it's been quite a roller coaster ride. Uh, it went from a thriving uh, secondary campus for our district, uh, for the high school, uh, to vacant, I believe, and then uh, uh, as an as a, as a educational facility uh, and an intermediate school for our sister district, uh, 67. Uh, then we leased it out to Highland Park in particular. Uh, school district and I'm not sure who else at one time when I when my kids first started at the high school back in the late 90s uh, it was uh, it was mothballed it was talk of tearing it down uh, then it was decided to, to fence it and mothball it expense a half million dollars a year and uh, Mr. Albus has been here since then and I think to his great credit has been part of the team to find now two long-term tenants, hopefully, uh, that uh, have complementary missions and, uh, you know, complementary activities here in the building. And, and I thank you, Alan, in particular, for all your work uh, since you've been here, really. I mean, it's just been an, 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 at the top of your agenda list <laughs> since. I appreciate getting all the. Uh, I appreciate getting all the credit, but it all goes to relationships. And I think, um, you know, Mike's connection with the people at Seed All. Our relationship with Sally Potter, uh, we had great conversations. So it it it, it was everybody involved that really, really yeah, pulled I, I us together. Yeah, I hear that. But if there wasn't a belief that we could have put this building to constructive use and and, and actually generate cash flow uh, from it, uh, we wouldn't all be sitting here tonight. So you were part of that, and uh, you know I, I think you do generally deserve the credit for it. And the, the community, I hope, can look forward to a, a, a long relationship here with, with New Connections, so thank you very much. If either of the other two of you would like to make some comments, uh, we would certainly welcome that. Yeah, please, because it, it won't make it to the videotape and uh, the community. And the three people watching at home will miss out on it. <laughs> uh, last time I did this, I got calls. Uh, no, actually, what I just want to say is thank you very much. It's We think of it as a wonderful opportunity. But it really couldn't have happened. And you asked at the beginning, Mr. Black, for feedback about your superintendent. What I will tell you from our end, working with Mr. Albus and your superintendent, Mr. Simic, has been nothing but a pleasure. Um, they've been just wonderful to work with. And every little detail, they've been flexible on. We've worked things out. So we really are looking forward to this as a joint venture with all of you. So we really appreciate it. So thank you. Well, we welcome that attitude. And uh, we look forward to our working together to our mutual aims and benefits. So thank you very much. Um, I think we need to stop saying nice things about Alan or he's going to think that this is his retirement meeting, you know? So enough of that. Oh, and Brittany he's does all the work may, anyway. No, it may well be, actually. <laughs> I know it's not on the agenda, but. And Brittany does all the work, as you pointed out. Is Jen hiding back here? No, Jen, Jen probably left us, so. OK, uh, let's move on then to the, uh, to the next item on the list, and that's uh, approval of the release of executive session minutes. I'm not sure why this is a separate board item, uh, action item as opposed to a, a part of the consent agenda, but I have reviewed those executive session minutes, and I would recommend we approve uh, release of them. As you know, they're generally uh, quite succinct uh, and sparing in their description of what gets discussed because of the legal parameters. Uh, board members, uh, do you have any questions or comments about that? I second your motion. I, I think not. Well, I was going to ask for a motion. Why don't you actually make the motion, uh, Mr. Powers? I move that Lake Forest Community High School District 115 Board of Education approve the release of the executive session minutes of July 2014 through January 2015. 
Second. Thank you very much, Mrs. Barrett. Mrs. Sorensen? Aye. Mr. Powers? Aye. Mrs. Snowblin? Aye. Mr. Schreiber? Aye. Mr. Mormon? Aye. Mr. Markison? Aye. Mr. Black? Aye. Thank you very much, board members, which brings us uh, to the last of the action items, and that is approval of the Human Resources uh, Report. Uh, Mr. Simic or Dr. Wilcox, uh, uh, do you have any comments? Recommend approving the Human Resources Report as presented. I move that the that's fine, please go ahead. I move that the Lake Forest Community High School District 115 Board of Education approve the Human Resources Report as presented. Second. Thank you very much. Uh, any comments or questions, board members? Uh, for the community's benefit, I always uh, like to mention when this is the case, there are no uh, unusual items here in the Human Resources Report. There's nothing extraordinary at all regarding any of our senior or staff personnel. So, Mrs. Barrett? Mrs. Snowblin? Aye. Mr. Mormon? Aye. Mr. Powers? Aye. Mr. Markison? Aye. Mr. Schreiber? Aye. Mrs. Sorensen? Aye. Mr. Block? Aye. Uh, which brings us to the consent agenda. Uh, board members, as you know, if anybody has any questions or objections to any item on the consent agenda, it can be removed. Uh, are there any questions uh, with regard to any of these items? Uh, hearing none, I would entertain uh, a motion for approval of the consent agenda. I move that the Lake Forest Community High School District 115 Board of Education approve the consent agenda items, including those that Mr. Block just outlined. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Mrs. Barrett? Mr. Powers? Aye. Mrs. Sorensen? Aye. Mr. Markison? Aye. Mrs. Snowblin? Aye. Mr. Schreiber? Aye. Mr. Mormon? Aye. Mr. Black? Aye. Thank you very, very much, uh, board members and members of the public. We had one uh, FOIA request uh, during the past uh, month, uh, and, and not something of significance that had to do with pest control in the building, I think probably from a commercial interest. Uh, in terms of announcements, uh, as I mentioned earlier, and as Mr. Simic mentioned, uh, we have a community open house coming up this Thursday, March 12th, uh, at the Lake Forest High School East Campus Library, uh, beginning at 7 p.m. Again, I would encourage all to attend. Friday, March 13th, uh, is a student attendance day now. It's a makeup day, uh, and all students are expected uh, to attend. Friday, March 27th, is the beginning of our annual spring break. Uh, at the end of Friday, uh, at the end of the, the school day on Friday, and then school reopens on Tuesday, April 7th, immediately after Easter. Our next uh, regular board meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, April 14th at 7 p.m. here in the West Campus uh, boardroom. Mr. Simic, uh, board members, does anyone have any further items to comment on? Hearing none, none I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much.